I use that, that method. But what I really wanted to show you, uh, I wanted to talk about, is that this camera has assignable dials. There's one assignable dial here on the smart grip, and there's another one here on the camera body. And each one of these dials can be individually uh, configured to control either the iris aperture or the ISO gain or focus or the audio level. So both of them are separately configurable. And the buttons are very large uh, and easy to operate even with gloves. And so this is assignable one, which is normally S and Q's. You all know what S and Q stands for? Slow and quick. So the camera can crank from one frame per second up to 60 frames per second in single frame increments. So you can select the cranking speed. And from 60 on, depending on the format, it can go up, and let's say in HD intra, up to 180 frames per second. Or in uh, XAVC long, up to 120 frames per second HD. And so it's very easy just to push the button and invoke the feature. Um, this is assignable too, which is uh, iris, um, auto or manual. And the last one is a user menu. Um, all of the connectors um, face backwards. So this is the, like the headphone or the power switch. Uh, the other dial I didn't mention is over here. And uh, power switch, everything is recessed and protected so that it won't misoperate. The same thing with the viewfinder cable. It hugs the body of the camera. And even if you have a XLR connected, it's facing backwards. So this is not gonna snag into anything you can do. You can run and gun, you can move around without any fear of uh, getting caught. Uh, there are two SDIs. The SDIs are 3G, and they're always 422 10-bit. And there's a, one HDMI, and the HDMI could be 4K, UHD, or HD, 422 10-bit. It's set at 60p, in which case it is 8-bit 420 due to limitations of the HDMI standard. One really a uh, powerful feature that the camera supports is it has an MI shoe. The MI shoe can support different types of accessories. One of them is a light. You can have a light. I don't really care for a light because the camera is very sensitive. But I really love being able to have my wireless receiver uh, on the MI shoe because I don't need to have a battery on my wireless receiver. When I turn the camera on, the wireless receiver comes on. When I turn it off, it turns off automatically. And I don't need any audio cables. It sends a signal right through the MI shoe. Um, and this Sony UWPD is incredibly powerful. There are many um, small audio, uh, uh, wireless audio systems, like the one I'm using here from, from the, some German company. And they have two antennas. But both antennas are connected to the same tuner. On the Sony UWPD, it has two tuners. This is a true diversity. I don't know if you ever used to, heard the word diversity receiver. This, has, this is a true diversity receiver. There are two tuners in here. And it's selecting the signal from the strongest, whichever tuner has the strongest signal. So this is not going to fade on you or drop off as easily as these systems that have both antennas tied to the same. And it's pretty smart. It's also made out of magnesium, but it's pretty smart. The receiver can scan the spectrum and find empty channels, unused wireless channels. And then it can program the transmitter. There's a little IR port and can do that automatically. So you're gonna go on location you can find an audio channel and get rolling right away. It's not like having to talk to the frequency coordinator or running around with uh, papers with frequencies and so on. So this is, uh, I think, uh, it's, it's, it's one of the most uh, wonderful things. You see, it just came on because I put it in. 
All right. So this is what it looks like. And the next thing is the uh, FLN system. So the camera has a native E-mount. And I don't know if you, you're familiar with Kanaka Minolta? You ever heard that names? So Kanaka Minolta is a legendary uh, camera and lens manufacturer. They actually made lenses for lights, Leica. And it was the first company to ever develop a um, proper light metering system. So it had a very high technology. And the, these copal shutters that we use these days with the magnesium and so on, or titanium, uh, they were part of the development of this technology. In any case, um, they had fallen behind. Canon and Nikon got ahead of them. And uh, Sony bought them out. And overnight, we became a famous lens maker. And uh, uh, they had a lot of tradition, but their production lines were kind of antiquated. Uh, a lot of hand polishing and so on. Uh, we then created a state-of-the-art factory in Kota, Japan, and another one in Thailand. And nowadays, we are producing lenses like these that have compound, uh, they have groups. They are compound aspherical. These are not just a simple curve. These are lenses that have, have uh, very complex shapes and they're made to go mate up against each other. And, and tolerance is in the Armstrongs. An Armstrong is a thousand of a, millimeter, of, of a micron. So it's, it, you can measure it by the yeah, the, the, the width of the light rays. So it's very, very precise. And we can do this with 95% yields. So we are now state of the art. The other thing is that because uh, Minolta had fallen behind and Nikon and Canon lenses were incompatible with the Minolta bodies, Sony then uh, decided to create cameras that did not require a mirror box and a new mount. It's the E-mount, the mount that we use on this camera. And this E-mount was designed from the beginning to uh, be not only for still images, but also for motion. And this is why we can open and close the iris in hundreds of a stop. And this is why we can make zoom lenses, because we can control all the protocol, the communication protocol is already designed from the beginning for the application. It's not only made for still, the lenses that are made for still, they don't need to open an iris uh, uh, with very high precision, they just need to get to quickly to a certain stop. And so you're using a lens that was designed for a DSLR, it's going to open and close in one third of a stop or one fourth of a stop increments. This is one hundredths of a stop increments. And of course, we can use virtually any other lens. One of the things that the design of the E-mount is also that it has the shortest flange distance. So it's only 18 millimeters. So you can put lenses on this camera that are designed for uh, rangefinder cameras like a Leica. So you can put Leica R or Leica M lenses on this camera because this has such a short flange that those lenses will be able to focus on, the, on this camera. So this has, gives you simple mechanical adapter. You can virtually put any lens on it. You don't need to have any optics or anything on it. So this is what the E-mount looks like. And this, in the case of this camera, this is made entirely of stainless steel. It is very robust. And I just wanted to, this is a, uh, frame graph, my Mac is now, my Mac looks good, this thing is acting up. Um, and you can see, you cannot see, but I'm gonna blow it up for you. So this is the iris F number, you can see the F 5.54. So this is hundreds of a stop resolution. And the same thing with the focusing is a three digits. So uh, this is down to a millimeter. Uh, which is less than a 30 seconds of an inch. It's very amazing. Um, and um, in this case, the, the zoom lens was at the very end. It was shot with this lens, so 
uh, the zoom, uh, zoom position was zero and in the uh, 135 millimeter, but we do capture the uh, aperture. And now, there are many lenses, A mount and A mount lenses, and you can use the, these A mount lenses with the adapter. Total um, between the two is uh, 56 altogether. And when you use A mount lenses with a camera, the camera can do face detection autofocus. And that lets you do very precise focusing, and it's possible to even uh, do this at, at whether it's shooting at high frame rates so or even at 240 frames per second, the camera can track an object that is moving with the face detection and autofocus. Uh, we continue to develop more and more lenses, and these are the latest ones that we introduced at Photokina. Uh, these are all very high quality lenses. These lenses, these new E mount lenses, the first E mount lenses were inexpensive because they were for inexpensive cameras. But these new ones, they're designed to go in the Alpha A7R. That has 36 million pixels, and it can capture over 14 stops latitude. So this camera will be able to, will, all these defects will become apparent. If there were any defects, optical defects will become apparent on the A7R. And uh, so the lenses have to be built to a very high standard. And of course, <coughs> they're compatible with the uh, FS7 as well. So all of these new lenses, they're great. And please note that the, uh, all the zoom lenses have OSS. So this is optical stabilization, which is an important thing when you're running and gunning. So now we have three servo zoom lenses. Um, if, if you, your super 35 millimeter lenses, uh, servo zooms are very expensive. The Cine lenses, this is 40,000. There's a Canon lens, 31,000. Uh, but we have now three of them. Uh, this one is the 18 to 105 G. I was speaking with one of the people here before. Um, it has a very uh, good range it, from 18 millimeters to 105 millimeters. It's also internal focus and internal zoom, just like the uh, kit lens, which is 28 to 135. And there's uh, uh, 18 to 200 as well. This is the kit lens. This has a uh, hard stops for the focus, or it could be electronic, and you can override the uh, electronic. And the zoom also has hard stops, and the iris can click or not. So you can turn uh, you can turn the click off and also has stops and markings. There are markings on the lens. So uh, this lens does not breathe. So if you zoom all the way in and you change the focus, the image is not gonna change size. Uh, while you're zooming, it's not gonna swim around. The image is not gonna move around. And there's no ramping. So as you zoom in, the image will remain with the same brightness as it, at, as it was at full white. Yes, there was somebody with a question. Yeah, I heard that lens did a photo flush, and it seemed like there's a slight lag when you zoom in. There's a slight lag when, when you zoom because this is not mechanically controlled. So this is controlled with very precise, uh, so if you whip it, there's a lag. If you normally uh, open and close it, there's no lag. Uh, this. Of course, it is digitally controlled. It has linear motors to control it, and there is a limit to the speed that the motor can run at. Now, the lens that you saw, a Photo Plus, was a prototype. Uh, this is a production lens. After we're done, please play with it and see if there's any difference. I'm very interested in your feedback. Yes? I saw on your list a very wide-angle converter. Oh, yes. Yes, I apologize. I was just trying not to take too much time. Yes, so these are the new lenses that we introduced at Photokina. Um, there's, there's a uh, wide range zoom, 24 to 240 millimeter. There is a F2.8, um, a 28 millimeter F2, sorry. Uh, and this, there are two adapters for it. There is a ultra wide angle adapter. It means it's ge geometric, no geometric distortion, but very good angle of view. And um, there's a fisheye 
adapter for it as well. So these are, go in front of the um, 20 millimeter f2.8 lens. And there's, there is um, a very fast prime, f1.4, 35 millimeter. And this one, I'm dying to get my fingers on it, is uh, my grubby paws on it. It's a 90 millimeter f2.8 uh, mi uh, uh, micro. Um, uh, of course, with optical stabilization, these are a beautiful uh, lenses so far. So the converter is uh, 0.7 or something? Is that the, I don't know the exact details, but you give me your information, I'll get back to you with the details. Uh, this may be online, this is probably online already because we announced this at Photokina. We can, yeah, maybe even the Adorama staff is familiar because they sell these stuffs here. Anyway, so let me advance. Yeah, so um, 